right. Hey, what's up, everybody? We're glad to be at church today. Come on, put our hands together. Come on, I hope you're awake because we came to have fun in church today. Listen to me going, I don't know where I'm at. I thought this was church. This doesn't look like church to me. Listen, fun in church is a value for us. We think this ought to be the most fun day of the week. So if church is a bore to you, you've been in the wrong one, okay? So I hope that you got a little personality, a little, little laughter with you today because we're going to have a good time. And I'm going to need your help because we are kicking off a new series today called Read My Lips. And it's going to be a lot of fun. We've actually got some contestants on the platform. I'm going to play today. Can you put your hands together? Come on and welcome our contestants today. So I'm going to need a little help and a little feedback, and I'll tell you what, how we're going to play this game in a second. But when I say we're going to play Read My Lips, what I need you to do is I need you to give me that game show crowd, you know, repeat. You know what I'm talking about when I say we're going to play Read My Lips, and you go, Read My <laughs> Lips. Yes, my, my game show people are here. All right, so let's try it together, all right? Are you ready to play Read My Lips? Read my lips. That's so good. I love it. I'm, we may do that like all morning. That is so cool. I love game shows. In another life, I was supposed to have been a game show host, but they said I was too short, so I couldn't be the host of any of their shows, okay? So here's how this is going to work. We have one contestant this morning, and we have a panel. Now, the goal is I'm going to ask a couple of questions this morning, and each of these individuals are going to write down their answers. The goal today is for this contestant to be able to match her answer, no speaking, only mentally, with the panel right here. So when I ask them the question, we're going to give them a few moments to answer. They're going to write their answers down, and then we're going to let her reveal her answer, and then we're going to go one by one to the panel to see if she got her answer right. Now, we all know in marriage, somebody goes, I can't read your mind. Like, do you know that? I cannot read your mind. That's how this game works. We're going to see who can read each other's minds. And so th this is fun for you. Go ahead and grab your outline for today's message, and you can write down your answer to these questions to see if you get these right as well. Is everybody ready? Say, yeah. 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 Are we ready to play Read My Lips? Read My Lips. So good. You watching at home, you're only getting like half of it. I wish you were here, <laughs> all right? All right, here's question number one. Are we all ready? Yeah. Everybody ready. Okay, here we go. Shaquille O'Neal was so big. How, How big, big was, was he? he? Okay, you ready? Shaquille O'Neal was so big. How big was he? You guys are good. 1015's got it coming. That when he was a baby, he couldn't be delivered by a stork. He had to be delivered by blank. Clock is ticking. Come on. Shaquille O'Neal was so big when he was a baby that he could not be delivered by a stork. So he had to be delivered by blank. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that laughter means. Listen, this is unrehearsed, so let me just tell you. We are in church, and we have prayed. We have worshiped the Lord. What is written on these cards, I have no control over, okay? All right? We can only lead a horse to water. None of you are horses. But we cannot make them drink, okay? Is everybody with me? Are we good at that? Are we ready? One last time. Shaquille O'Neal was so big that when he was a baby, he could not be delivered by a stork. So he was delivered by. Are you ready? You're still riding. Are you ready? Come on, answer in. Answer in. Tell us what your answer is. Show everybody. Show everybody. Keep yours concealed. Lift that card. What is it? An elephant? Okay, all right. all right. That's an answer. That is an answer. We do have an answer, okay? Uh, anybody else want to shout one out real quick? What you get? You got a better one? Come on. A crane. A crane? A crane? Okay. Woo! First and second rows in sync. Anybody in the back? A pterodactyl? Helicopter. All right, let's see. I mean, all of those are things that could lift heavy things, maybe, okay? But babies, elephants, too, okay? What, what was your answer? A helicopter. All right. Come on. Somebody out there, give yourself a hand. Somebody, in the, in, somebody else out there got helicopter. You did not. There's no point. It doesn't help me. All right. Answer number two. A giraffe. Okay. Almost. Judges, give me a... Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's, that's, it's close, but not close enough. All right. Are we understanding how this works yet? Are we ready to play Read My Lips? Read my lips. 
Don't go to sleep. We've only had one question. All right, question number two, and this is going to be the final question for our time together. Are we ready? You got one shot to get at least one point on the board. All right, this is better. All right, we're talking about Harriet. Are you ready? She's got a lot of confidence. Are you sure? Okay, we're talking about Harriet. Okay. Harriet is at work. All right. You ever been real hungry at work? You just thought, I need to, when's lunchtime? You're watching the clock. Well, Harriet was at work one day, and she looked up from her desk and said, I am so hungry. I could eat. Let's do it. I love it. Let's do it again. Harriet was so hungry. How hungry was she? That's what I'm talking about. Harriet was so hungry, she, um, she said, I could eat my blank. A lot of confusion across the audience. Harriet was at work one day. She looked up from her desk and she said, I am so hungry, I could eat my blank. Jesus had to stop her on that one. You're, you're praying about that. Oh, Jesus had to stop her on that one, she said. Pray right now, pray. All right, come on, you're writing them down. Come on, everybody, write, write, write. You, you okay? You hurting over here? She's like... Just checking on you. All right, all right. Everybody got a good answer? Nobody's writing. What? I mean. I'm stuck because the first answer wasn't a very good. Well, I don't know what you're going to do about that. I can't help you with that. All right, last time, I want to ask you one more time. Harriet was at work one day. She looked up from her desk and said, I am so hungry, I could eat my blank. Come on, anybody out here? Somebody yell one? So hungry, I could eat my what? Computer, arm. Desk, stapler. My weight in gold. My weight in gold. <laughs> the jello that my stapler is buried in. For you office fans, you'll get that one, all right? All right, here we go. Let's see. What is our answer? She's so hungry she could eat her fingers. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Because maybe they had been dipped in like breakfast. They still had like the grease from the biscuit of breakfast on the fingers. That'll work. I love it. I love it. All right. What is your answer? Foot? Yeah. That's clean? Feet are dirty. Kind of dirty. If that's cleaner than your fingers, we need, to, we need to talk on that one. All right, almost close. I could eat my arm. All right. Well, listen, give yourselves a hand because some of you got the right answers out here. Come on, give yourself a hand. Give the contestants a hand. Come on, that's good. Did you have a good time? Say, yeah. All right, so here's what we're doing all month long. Why did we do that? Why did we play that game? Because we're talking all month long about sharing our stories. Every one of us in this room, we have a story to share. God's give every one of us something in here that he wants us to share. There's something that God has done in your life, and he wants us to share it with somebody else. You know, the exact reason that you and I are still on this planet is simply because God has given us something to do, and he's given us something to say. The Bible says we're not saved by works, but we're saved for good works, meaning there's something that he wants us to do, and we say it around here like living life on purpose. And so our heart this month is to help us understand uncover what our stories are, what God has done, so that we can take that to the people that are around us. Every one of us in this room, you've got influence, you've got people in your life that, uh, that watch you and look up to you and listen to you, all those people at work that hear you when you say, I'm so hungry, I could eat my, and then you've got the wrong answer right here at first, you know what I'm saying, and you got to filter that. They hear all of that. Our families get the worst of us, don't they? We've had a bad day, and we have concealed it from everybody else because we want to keep our job, but then as soon as we get home, it does not matter. They live with me. They can just listen to what I have to say. And so what we want to do this month is we want to connect our stories of life change, of what Jesus has done in us, so that that can be done through us to impact lives of people around us. So all month long, as we talk about Read My Lips, just as it's hard to connect what she's thinking to what they're thinking, as hard as it is to connect those dots to make all of that stuff make sense so that everybody is on the same wavelength, sometimes sharing our faith is the exact same way. It's like, I don't know what to say. I don't really know if I have a story. How do I get a story? and then who do I tell and how do I tell them and when do I tell it? How do we all get on the same page and the same wavelength so that what God has done in us can be done through us? And this month, all of these weeks ahead, we're going to connect these dots together and by the end of this month, we're going to have learned how we can share our faith together. So here's what I want to do. I want you to bow your head with me and I'm going to pray 
And I want to ask God to speak to us through his word today so that we can be better when we leave this place. So, Father, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence in this room, God. We thank you for a place of fun. We thank you for a place of laughter, God. Laughter does good like medicine. And so, Father, we pray that through our day together, God, that you would strengthen us to be what you've created us to be so that we can do what you've called us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. So on your outline, I want you to grab your your notes out of your worship, God, if you didn't already grab those. And I want to give you the key verse of scripture that will kind of underline this, uh, this series as we go forward this month. 1 Peter 3.15 says this, And if someone asks you about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. If you have somebody ever caught you off guard with a question and you said, oh, I have no idea, I don't, give me 10 minutes and I'll come back to you. It completely caught you off guard. It was something that you should know. It was something that you should be able to recall so easily. But right there on the spot, you just completely blank. Like you could not get your words to match what was running through your brain. And sometimes when you're in a moment of your faith being tested or challenged or questioned, sometimes it's hard to find those words to catch up with our brain. We know what God has done for us, but yet how do we put it into words? How do we express that to other people? Lots of people do this in different ways. Some people are just loud mouths. You ever been around a loud mouth? Like, you know if you get stuck with them in the line at Walmart, you're not leaving for at least an hour. They're going to talk to you for days. And then some people, they won't talk to you in person, but as soon as they get online on the Internet, you're like best friends. Like, you could talk for hours, and you're like, I didn't even know you knew how to talk. Like, it's, it's how, who we are and our personalities. We have these disconnects. So when somebody asks us about our faith, we need to be prepared always to take advantage of the opportunity. Now, I love Pastor Brandon Dawes, and I love Pastor Brandon Dawes' stories. I mean, the best stories that I have are all Brandon Dawes' stories. And I'll never forget this one season of his life. He said, you know what? He said, I'm just going to challenge myself. He said, I'm going to share my faith with everybody. Everybody that comes, I'm going to find a way that I'm going to tell them about Jesus. And we were eating at Jim and Nick's one night, the barbecue restaurant. And this was back in the day uh, before, like, fancy cell phones and tablets and stuff. He had a little bitty, like, notebook about the size of my hand in his front pocket and a pen. And we're sitting at the restaurant, and this waiter comes up, and he says, Hey, he said, I'm so-and-so. I'll be your waiter today. He said, Can I get you something to drink? And we all order our drinks. And then Brandon Doss grabs that notepad and pops the top off of it. You know, a little, little flap on it, pops the flap over, grabs his pen, and goes, What's your name? And the waiter looks at him like, what? I mean, I just now get in your drinks. What did I do wrong? And he tells him his name, and Brandon writes it on that pad right there. And the look of fear on this waiter's face. And then he goes, is there anything I can pray with you about? And the waiter goes, I'll be right back with your drinks. And literally <laughs> just walks off. Doss takes that pen and goes, puts it back in his pocket, folds the pad, and I think that was the end of that little moment where he said, I'm going to share my faith with everybody. Now, if you know Pastor Brandon Doss, when he walks into public, when he walks out into the wild, everybody he sees, he's going, you know, he will get over in their face. Like, you know, some people try to ignore you. He'll be like, I waved at you. Didn't you see me over here? I'm waving at you. Like, it's weird. It's really, really weird. And so we don't want to be that person, but how do we get our story and how do we attach it? Because listen, every day, every single day, there's an opportunity. The reason we don't see them may just be because we don't ask for them or because we're not looking for them. But every single day, God has provided an opportunity for us to share our story with somebody around us. And so today, I want to try to equip us on how to do that. So grab your outline. And number one, here's how to take our journey to find our story. If I can help you find your story today, we've won today. And the first thing is this, is you need to know my journey before Christ. Let's start from the beginning. Some stuff that you've tried to forget. Like some of us have been, have been saved for so long, like we've tried to forget that we had that life. Like now, oh, that doesn't apply to me anymore. I'm washed by the blood of Jesus, okay? But the reality is your yesterday is for somebody today. And so instead of erasing that, we need to embrace that because that is the sign of what Jesus has done. Without that, we wouldn't know what Jesus has done in our life. So we need to step back and just take account of our life before we met Jesus. And I want to talk to you about a guy named Paul today. Uh, his name was Saul originally, and when he uh, gave his heart to Jesus, uh, Jesus renamed him to Paul, changed his name. It happened a lot in the Bible. 
But in this chapter, Acts 9, verses 1 and 2, this is a description of Saul before he became Paul. He said, Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager, listen to this, to kill the Lord's followers. Now, I know some of you were messed up back in the day, okay? Some of us are still borderline this morning, okay? But listen, none of you, I don't think, were this guy out trying to kill Christians. It says, so he went to the high priest. He requested letters like official permission to go out into the synagogues in Damascus and ask for cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way that he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. Listen, all of us in this room, we got a story. Every person in here has a story. Even the guy who went to write the most of the New Testament that we read, Paul wrote most of the New Testament. Paul was an early church planter that planted most of the early churches that that we benefit from today. It was from a man whose sole purpose, when we talked about life on purpose, he would say, my life on purpose is to punish and kill all of the Christians. That's what he was doing with his life, and yet God was still able to show up and do something with him. The greatest thing that we have is a story. Everybody loves a story. Listen to me. Not everybody loves the Bible. Not everybody loves the gospel. Not everybody loves Jesus. I don't understand this, but not everybody loves church. But they love a story. Listen, you will binge watch a story. That that didn't exist until Netflix said, You love a story, and we can prove it to you, and we'll feed you one after another, and before you know it, your hair is like this, your eyes are bloodshot, you don't know what day it is, but man, that was awesome. (laughs) And you thought you were done until the little thing popped up and said, beginning this one in five, four, three, two, one. I'm already sucked in now. I might as well watch it. Like we love a story. Listen, men, you watch ESPN. You love, you love sports so much, you will sit and watch somebody talk about sports. They're not even playing it. They're just talking about it. Why? Because they're telling the story. It's not even about the events that are happening in the moment. It's the story of the players and being traded and how much they got paid and, and all of the different stuff that's happening. It's the story of it all. We love stories. And so you need to identify what is the story of your life. What has God done in your life? Where have you been? And you need to begin to tell that story. All good stories have a few main things. They have a plot, right? There's, there's, there's a meaning. There's something that happens, hopefully, in what you watch. There are characters. We love to watch those characters because we can understand where they are. We can identify with their emotions. We root for those characters. We want to see them do good. We want to see them fall in love. Come on, ladies. Turn around. Turn around. Don't walk away. Turn around. Come on, you're crying. You're sobbing. They got paid millions for that. They're not really in love. They don't even like each other offset. But we're crying. Turn around. And then the third thing that you see in a story, always a good one, is conflict. Is that not true? Think about those, those cheesy 90s sitcoms, Full House. Come on, there was some kind of problem in the house, and then at the end, they kick that music in. And Danny Tanner sits on the bed, and he says, Stephanie, I want to talk to you. Dad loves you. Do you know why you don't need to do that? Yes, Daddy, I'll never do it again. And they hug, and they cry, and then everything's good again. At the end of it all, it's all good. Why? Because there was some conflict along the way. And so instead of erasing the conflict, the plot, all the characters that have been a part of our story, let's embrace it and say, God, out of all of this stuff that I have lived, out of all the conflict that I have walked through, out of all the mistakes that I have made, God, what is it that you want me to do with it? Who is this for? And then number two, you need to know your life after Christ. It's these pivotal moments across the journey of what Jesus does in us. Check out Paul. This is in Acts chapter 9, verse 18 and 20. It says, instantly, this is his moment with Jesus, instantly something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. I believe this was spiritually. And he regained his sight. Not only in the moment when, when, he, when he found Jesus, the Bible says a bright light came from heaven, blinded him, and he literally could not see. At this moment, As it says, something like scales fell from his eyes, he regained his physical sight, 
But I believe this is a moment of spiritual work in his life as well. Then the Bible says he got up and was baptized. And immediately, go ahead and underline that word, immediately. He began preaching about Jesus in the synagogue saying, He is indeed the Son of God. What happened to his life after he met Jesus? Things began to change. The first thing that he did is he began to walk in obedience. I think you ought to write that on your outline somewhere. Just He walked in obedience. The very first thing, listen, he went from literally on his way riding a horse to kill Christians. God shows up, bright light in his eyes. He falls off the horse. Then he surrenders his life to God. And it says immediately he is baptized, walks in obedience. What's the first step of a believer after giving our heart to Jesus? Baptism. We're going to celebrate baptism uh, at 1015 this morning. Three people are being baptized. If you want to be baptized, just stay. We'll baptize you too. It's the first step of obedience. His life began to shift. It went from where he was going to a brand new direction. And then immediately he began to tell everybody about what had happened in his life. And so I ask us a couple of questions. Has your life mirrored that of Paul's? Because the real question is in in the room is, have we experienced real life change? Have we really, authentically, 100% given our heart to God? And if you don't know that, well, then ask yourself this question. Have I began to walk in obedience? Because Jesus said that if you love me, you will obey me. In other words, if we love him, we know what it means to serve him. We know what it means to live for him. And then we begin to walk after him. And so my life has to be measured by what I do. We're not saved by works, but we are saved for good works. And the way I live is a good indicator as if my heart has been 100% sold out to Jesus. And if you're in this room or watching by the internet today and you're going, oh man, that's not me, my life is not. My life does not pattern the life of Jesus. Well, listen, it takes one second. It takes one moment for those scales to fall from your eyes and to simply go, Jesus, I want to completely give my heart and my life to you. And when those scales begin to fall and we begin to walk in obedience, then what happens? We just tell everybody about what Jesus has done for me. Write this question on your outline. What has Jesus done for me? What is my life like now that... I've encountered Jesus. What was that moment for me? Can you remember that moment? If not, maybe that moment's for you today. Or maybe it's just been a journey. Maybe for you it's been a a journey of God doing something inside of you. And listen, I want to say this very specifically because there's lots of people in here that you feel bad because you never were bad. There are some people that walk through life and go, man, I just... I just never did that. I just never walked in bad stuff, and so there's no way I could have a testimony. I don't have anything to say. I don't have anything to, to give away to anybody else. I didn't, I didn't go out and, and party and do all the stuff and make all the mistakes. I've just kind of always loved Jesus. Well, listen, your story is that of one of God's redemption in your life that has held you and carried you. It is God's faithfulness, and it is your story that can encourage somebody else to say, look, you don't have to walk through that. You don't even have to tread through those waters. You can stand here today, give your heart to Jesus, and he can carry you all the days of your life, and you don't have to step in all of that stuff. Listen, your story is your story. Is something that God has given to you, and only you can share it. You, your story is the only story that's ever been given just like yours, because it's yours. God loves us, and he created us as individuals for a specific purpose and a specific reason. What is your story? If you need some help, listen, write down this. Write down all the ways that Christ has changed your life. Just begin to write them down. All the ways that, man, I was this yesterday, and I'm here today. Like this was me six months ago, but today... This is, I'm a different person. Look at what God has done for me. Write down all the answered prayers that God has given in your life. Listen, if you're wondering, hey, is, is, God, is this thing, is God really there? Like, how do I wrap my mind around a God I can't see and I don't understand? Listen, you just begin to take note and write it down. Listen, act like you remember something. Come on, we, you know how we forget everything? Like, I don't know what happened yesterday. Write it down. And recount, man, I needed this from God, and he showed up. I know that God is faithful. Write down his blessings, and then this will help you to prepare your story. All of these things will help you get your story. You can go online at cultivatechurch.tv if you want to, if you want to resource this. And at the top of the direction bar, there's a, there's a drop-down that says Resources. And there's a tab that says Share My Story. And on that page, there is a, there's a download that you can click. And it will walk you through detailed information 
about how to get your story together. So if you're asking God to help you put this together, that's another resource that will help you. But you need to know where you were before Jesus. You need to know how you came to Jesus. And the number three, what has your life been since Jesus? Since the day I gave my heart to Jesus, how has my life changed? What have I done? How have I served? How have I given my life away? How am I making an eternal difference, an imprint, a fingerprint on somebody else's life? Listen to what the Bible says. This is Paul in Acts chapter 20. He says, now, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem. Now notice, this is Paul now about to go out on a missionary journey. And he says, compelled by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, telling him, this is what I want you, I need you to do this, Paul. This is, this is the purpose on your life, I need you to go. And he says, I don't know what's going to happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me, listen, that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given to me. The task of what? Testifying to the good news of God's grace. Paul said, it doesn't matter what's ahead of me. It really doesn't matter what it's going to cost me. I know that my life has been changed by Jesus. You may not remember. You may not have known who I was. But let me tell you, because of Jesus... He changed my life. And because of how he changed my life today, I'm going to use my life, no matter what it costs me, no matter what is ahead of me, to do what I've been called to do. And that is testify. That is share my story about what God has done in my life. I love reading the book of Acts about Paul's life. There's moments where Paul's in the streets and he's being arrested. He's been beat in the street. And he's been, he's been taken up the steps. He's going to be taken to trial because he's been proclaiming the name of Jesus. And the Bible says they literally had to carry him up those steps because he couldn't walk up those steps himself. And he leans over to one of those guards and he says, Can I please just say something? Before you carry me off, can I please just say one more thing? And they turn him around and being held by those men, having been beat, he stood on those stairs and he said, My name is Saul. Now Paul, because I was changed by the power of Jesus. I was on my way to persecute believers, but God showed up and he changed my life. And today, because of what he's done for me, I want it to be done for you. And in everything of his life, he always shared with the intent of how can my life benefit the life of somebody else. Your story may be the next great story that somebody else needs to hear. If only we'll take the time to recount and decide what has God done in my life? There's fingerprints all over your life. There's fingerprints of mistakes. There's fingerprints of failures. There's fingerprints of people that's in your life. When I was a kid, I got in trouble for fingerprints. That's how it worked in my house. You didn't touch anything. And my mom would say, I just cleaned that. Don't touch it. But I have to open the refrigerator. No, you don't. Get a towel, wrap it around the handle, and then open that refrigerator. No lie. Got in trouble for fingerprints. When a fingerprint is somewhere... It's hard to get rid of fingerprints. But can I tell you, God's fingerprints are greater than any of the fingerprints that are on your life that you've tried to wipe off. That every time you saw one in your life that you were embarrassed of or that discouraged you and you tried to say, let me get that clean, I need to get that fingerprint gone. God's saying, no, I want you to stop. And today I want you to embrace every one of those fingerprints that have made you who you are. And allow my fingerprints that have been on your life to carry all of that stuff and what the enemy meant for harm, God can use it for good. And so here's what I want to do today. I want to ask you to bow your head with me. And I'm going to ask our team to come back up and play. And here's my goal for us today. If you're a guest, nobody's going to come get you or make you stand or say anything or do anything. I just want to pray for us. And as the team comes to play, I've got a few things on my heart today that I want to pray with you about. And the first is this. Maybe you're in this room or watching by the internet and you'd say, man, I just... I don't know if my story has had that intersection with Jesus yet. I know when I look at before Christ, I, I never find that moment where Jesus showed up and changed my life. And if that's what you're saying today, then you're in the right place because I want to pray for you. And I want to give you a moment today to be able to say, Hey, Jesus, I want that moment today. I want you to be number one in my life. And I want you to help redeem my yesterday. 
And then secondly, here's my prayer for us today. I believe that maybe there's some of us in here, and it scares you to death at the thought of sharing your life story. It scares you to death because you're going, what would somebody think? Or what would they say if they only knew? You're worried because you're thinking, well, what would other people think of me? I've tried to change my life. I've tried to run from that. Some of us are still carrying some really heavy burdens, some hurts and some scars from our yesterday that we've never allowed God to heal us from. And So maybe you're struggling with that today. And so I want to pray for us. I want to pray that God would begin to heal some hearts in here and maybe some brokenness. And I want to ask that he would just remove all that shame and that guilt. Because the enemy doesn't want that story shared. The enemy wants to keep it silent. But God so desperately says, I've surrounded you with people that would benefit from the story of your life. And I want you to give it away. I want you to share it with others. So I want to pray for you today that God would do that. So whatever's on your heart, whatever you're walking through, if it's fear, failure, regret, shame, that God handle that today. That God heal that that weight and that worry from your life. Father, today we love you. We thank you so much, God, for your presence in this place. God, I really believe that you've called us today to remind us that we're here for a purpose, for a reason. We've lived lives with a yesterday. Thank God you meet us today and you send us into our tomorrow. And God, I'm praying for anybody that's here today that's in this moment that would say, I never had that intersecting moment where I saw Jesus show up and change my life. But today is the moment that I want to confess my sin and I want to accept Jesus into my heart and into my life. So right now, Father, we... We ask you to forgive us of any sin that separates us from you. We ask you to come into our lives and just change us. Take us from that yesterday where I may be today. And God, put me in my future for tomorrow as a brand new person. The Bible says the old is gone and all things are made new because of Jesus. And to Jesus, because of that today, we accept it. We give our heart to you. And Father, I pray for any of us in this room that may be holding on to some stuff. Some of those fears and failures, regrets, maybe some shame or some guilt. Maybe we've listened to the enemy that says, you don't have anything to share. You don't have a story. There's nothing you can add or give away to anybody else. But today, God, I just pray, Jesus, give us that, that assurance that everything was for a purpose. Everything was for a reason. Everything that I walk through is for somebody today. And everything that I will face tomorrow, every struggle, every obstacle, God, you'll teach me something that I can carry on and give away to somebody else. Thank you, God, that you redeem and you use all things. Today, we are sold out to you, Jesus. And we make a decision to walk in our purpose, to find our story, and to learn to share it with others. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, church. Can we put our hands together? Come on, celebrate Jesus today. Come on.